something. Um, but we are um, doing our awards a little different this year because there was this thing called the mm, pandemic. And so we haven't been able to get together for a delegate assembly for the last couple of years. And typically we give our awards out during delegate assembly. And therefore, we weren't able to do that the year before. Um, I still have um, Commissioner Bloomstead's beautiful apple. And if I had thought about him being here, I would have had to given it to him yesterday. But he's like, well, when we were in his um, session yesterday, he said, where's my apple? And I said, where did I say it was? In your closet. I knew who's supposed to come by and get it. <laughs> so we had a little conversation about that. So I should have um, um, thought about that um, for him to come. However, I hope that you've had a good um, session this morning. Anybody? Yes, great. Uh, I know that we have a leadership one on one session, and I'm sure we we'll get just great graves on the evaluation <laughs> from Linda. Um, so, we are going to start with something. Um, last year, because we didn't give our awards out, we had different presentations. I went to um, Palmer. Um, gave me awards at a gymnasium in Palmer in front of a live band. Oh, with a live band here over here from the Palmer people. Um, they had two award winners, and I went there early in the fall last year. And then um, we gave out a couple of awards at our um, Lincoln Public Schools board meeting. We had a couple winners from there. Um, and I went around and tried to do that. So well, one of our award winners came to the office. And he is a person I have just an, 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 uh, just admiration for. His name is Paul Fell. Has anyone ever heard of Paul Fell? Yeah. Paul Fell is a cartoonist that has done, oh my goodness, the best education cartoons um, through the years. Um, I envy him, um, that he can actually draw, but I envy him because he gets to say what I want to say um, that I can't say. So he has been a cartoonist for many years, and Paul last year um, was our Partner in Education Award winner, and he's joined us today. So Paul, Paul has already got his award, but I'd like him to have a couple of minutes to say hello to you and talk about what um, he has done through the years in education, um, short, uh, just because we have a lot of awards to give away. But Paul Fell, Thank you. Uh, the three worst words uh, you could ever hear from the speaker are, I'll be brief. <laughs> uh, I got my start as a high school art teacher, and uh, I was in Auburn, Nebraska for about eight years. I was the association president, did the, the salary and benefit negotiations, and then I went on to Peru State College and taught in their art department for 10 years their association president and uh, served on the committee that uh, did the faculty salary benefits, which was really a weird deal because the legislature determines what percentage raise the faculty is, you know, are going to get. <laughs> and then what we were doing was fighting with the board of trustees so that the college presidents didn't siphon off some of that money for their own pet projects. Sound familiar, anybody? <laughs> it was a strange experience. And we had to do it for summer, too, which was a lot of fun. Um, many of you, or some of you old grizzled veterans, uh, remember that I had done a lot of artwork for the NSA, NSEA over the years. And when I was a young teacher ed kid, I remember our professors didn't tell us to join the NEA and the NSEA, but the thing that stuck with me was they said, you cannot be considered a professional in your field unless you belong to professional organizations. Amen. And that's so true. And, you know, you guys have given up part of your summer vacation. I hate to say teachers' summer vacation, but you're giving up part of your summer to enhance your professional standing and bring this situation back to your local chapter. I've been a union guy since I was a kid. My dad back in Massachusetts uh, helped organize the municipal employees in Worcester, Massachusetts. So I'm the son of a rabble rouser and 
you know, to get a decent summer job, you had to join the union and pay union dues. Oh my God, in violation of the Right to Work Act, which didn't exist then. I call that the Right to Get Screwed Act. <laughs> so pay your dues and pay and cheer for it. Uh, if I'm still cartooning, I do a cartoon every week for the Nebraska Press Association that some of you see in the local papers. I also do five cartoons a week for my national syndication, and you can see my cartoons either at Paul Fell Cartoons on Facebook. I want to warn you, I don't do Facebook, I don't do Twitter. My web guy posts the cartoons on Facebook. Uh, they also appear at uh, paulfellcartoons.com, my website. So, uh, I'll keep drawing as long as people keep giving me money. It does keep my wife from making me do things I don't want to do. <laughs> I'd love to help you, honey, but I'm on deadline. <laughs> thank you for the recognition, and uh, thanks for inviting me here, and there is a free lunch. There is a free lunch. for my supper. Thank you very much. and he's teaching everybody as he draws the, his cartoons as well. Um, so please check out Paul's um, website. And um, I'm sure there are things that are for sale as well. So this year, we are going to recognize two local associations that have done an exemplary job of raising money for the NSCA Children's Group. We recognize the local that has raised the most money, as well as the local that has raised the most per member. So the Children's Fund was started many years ago, and it helps members and our students across the state. So if you need something, if you've never used the Children's Fund, it is very easy to use. And we have donations from our locals that raise money, we have members, and we also have public that give donations, we have memorials. And if you need something, you can just call and say, hey, I need, uh, we have a new family in town, and they have no, no beds to sleep on. We have a new family in town. They just came from the southern states, and guess what? It's snowing in Nebraska. We need some boots, we need some coats. We do all of those things. We've done a lot of dental appointments. We've done a lot of medication. Um, and all you have to do is call the office. Um, we used to work with uh, Shotco or different places, and now some of those places have closed. So typically, you would just turn in your receipt, and you get your money back very quickly. So friends, please use that. And this year, um, the Julio Vista Education Association gave $3,770 to the Children's Fund. They were the highest. <laughs> Battle Creek Education Association gave a total of $396, which was the highest per member at $12.77 per member. So today, um, Carrie Shepard from Battle Creek was unable to join us, but we do have Dave Hoopner. Dave, are you here? He was here. Well, we don't have Dave Hoopner. Uh, but we have, who else is here? Jordan's here from Julia Lillista. Oh, you want Andrew to do it? He's already getting one. He so he, he was like the great child. Okay, so Andrew is getting another award. Andrew Nambi, come on up. Um, and he put this Gallagher Jr. was one of the NSCA's 
very first field staff employees. He was a World War II veteran and a veteran teacher, coach, and administrator when he joined the NSCA staff in 1970, the year of my birth. He traveled border to border to meet member needs, focusing on southern and southwest Nebraska. Gallagher was on duty when he died in a car accident on Interstate 80 near Odessa on October 6, 1972. In 1974, NSCA instituted the William Gallagher Jr. Award to honor his organizing skills. This award recognizes the governance district that enrolls the largest percentage of eligible members within that district. Will Metro District President Marsha Hedquist please accept the 2020-21 award? And he made a video for us 
um, but he really wanted his mom to be here, so I'm going to say, hey, mom, you did a good job. Um, and we're going to watch the video of Lee. Hello, NSEAU Summer of 2021. My name is Lee Perez, and I'm an ESL teacher for Alice Buffett Magnet Middle School in Omaha, Nebraska for the Omaha Public Schools District. I apologize I wasn't able to attend in person today, but I'm currently in Mexico for my five-year wedding anniversary and to see some extended family I've never met. I just want to say thank you. I'm truly humbled and blessed to be the 2021 Teaching of Excellence Award winner for the Nebraska State Education Association. Nebraska Public Schools teachers, I just want to say an additional thank you for everything you were able to do during this very chaotic and uncertain year. To NSEA leadership, specifically Jenny Benson, Maddie Fennell, Tracy Hartman Bradley, and OEA President Bobby Miller, thank you so much for your leadership and grit during these very uncertain times. You truly were the light at the end of the tunnel, and for that I say thank you very much for everything you did for us, and most importantly, Nebraska Public Schools. Whether you're an attendee or a presenter at NSEAU, collaborate and learn and get involved in the association. The association is only as strong as its members. As the famous JFK once said, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Well, I'll give you an additional take to JFK's famous quote. Ask not what the association can do for you, but rather what you, our members, can do for the association. We're only as strong if we work together. With great leadership that we have in Nebraska, we are able to collaborate and do more together as a team. So get involved, join committees, call your senators, and most importantly, advocate for your students, communities, and families, both inside and outside of your classrooms. Again, thank you so much for this honor. I really truly hope each and every one of you have a great NSEAU, and most importantly, have a great summer. Take care, everybody.
turn it over to someone else who won't cry. Are you going to cry? There you go. Schools would be nothing without educational support professionals. They keep our students fed. They make sure the schools are clean. They get students safely to and from schools and so much more. This year's ESP of the Year has been in, involved in the Westside Education Association for nearly three years. In that time, his vision, dedication, and unending enthusiasm has been a guiding force for Westside and for NSEA. In his field, his, nom his nominated wrote, this person must anticipate problems and solutions that are unplanned while working with staff and students. He must prioritize his day based on the needs of others, which he, which he does with, a, which, with professionalism and grace. In addition to working a full-time job, he is taking full-time classes and pursuing a bachelor's degree. Yet, he still finds time for the association work, where he is a leader Executive Council in the Westside Education Association. This year, he testified in front of the Nebraska Legislature in favor of continuing continued pay for ESPs during the pandemic. It is a great pleasure to give this honor to Travis Poe, who is an IT specialist at Westside Community Schools. Um, could Teresa now please? Recruit others. 
The group purchased and donated money for fabric, they cut and sewed the masks, and ran a pickup and delivery system for sewing kits, all while rushing completed masks to those who needed them. In addition, they made ear savers, surgical caps, and instrument bell covers. The organization was named the 2020 Star of the State, a campaign by community newspapers across Nebraska. That designation came with a $2,020 donation in Karen and Mandy's name to the Food Bank of Lincoln and the People's City <coughs> Mission, further spreading their impact on our communities. For their selfless support of and compassion for the community in the midst of a global pandemic, NSCA is proud to recognize Karen and Mandy Airport and Two Strings for Lincoln as this year's Community Service Award winners. Michaela Oveda 
principal at Golden Hills Elementary School in Belgium. Teaching, 
nor did anyone quit doing it. NSCA worked with teachers on a statewide television network, News Channel Nebraska, to quickly begin broadcasting daily doses of teacher TV. How many of you taught teacher TV? Whoop! Yay! Yay. Paul hatched eggs while all of the little children watched on in okay. anticipation. Um, I went to the office in my pajamas and did a <laughs> at night so I could take someone's place when we were doing it live. Then we started bringing in videos, and all the time we were doing that, um, we had to have a way to get it out. News Channel Nebraska was that way. They partnered with us. They helped us. They got. Uh, they uploaded all these hundreds of videos in English and in Spanish. Um, we prov provided. I don't know how many hundreds of lessons. Um, we had letters from grandparents. One that sticks out in my mind is a grandfather who said, my, um, my daughter and son-in-law are essential workers. I am not a teacher. How many parents said that last year? I am not a teacher and I love you now like I never loved you before. Um, and he called the office and just wanted to say thank you because for him, being able to sit and watch teacher TV with his grandchildren helped him be a teacher because he had to do that work. So for your outstanding work in covering education issues <coughs> and promoting community involvement in education through our teacher TV, the NSEA is proud to present News Channel Nebraska with the 2021 Partner in Education Award. Accepting the award today is Andy Ruback. He is the CEO of Flood Communications. Yeah. I'll be brief. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is like hard for us to even uh, like contemplate getting an award like this. Every day, uh, the mission of our company is to serve the underserved. And when I talk about serving the underserved, we talk about serving all Nebraskans, uh, regardless of what language they speak. And so we, we, News Channel Nebraska is the largest news network across Nebraska that, that covers everything from border to border uh, and with a focus on rural. And then our sister company, Telemundo Nebraska, which we also own and operate, was the first, uh, was the first news 24-hour news department in the state. And here's, what the, here's, here's one thing that you guys should know. Uh, you know, schools got shut down, the world got shut down. I, I, think, I think the three of us put this thing together in like 72 hours, I'm not kidding. It was unbelievable. What do we do? <laughs> it was unbelievable how, uh, how your organization mobilized and became a real critical partner. Because listen, all we were trying to do, you know, is help, is help uh, people in need. And what we thought we could help is, hey, kids aren't in school, parents don't have a clue how to teach. Um, maybe there's a role for us here, and, and we did find that uh, we had a wonderful, wonderful partnership uh, with the NSEA and this project. And, and just one of the reasons it kind of worked, um, Brandon, you guys see Brandon in the back of the camera? By the way, all this is going to be on the news later. <laughs> except the crying, except the crying. <laughs> we, we do, I mean, we're, we're the company that does all the high school sports, right? You guys have seen us do all those things. And so we, we're already good at doing like live events and doing things really quickly with cameras and, and graphics and things like that. And so we're going to be doing any sports here anytime soon with, with what happened with the pandemic. And so Brandon, who's our director of uh, live events, uh, and Tyler, who was our top producer of live events, we just went from catching, catching footballs and baskets and, and hitting baseballs to education, and, and you know, it was crazy how it happened, but our distribution uh, was there, it was free, right? You didn't have to pay for any of it, website, Facebook, and we did this for three or four months in, in two different languages, and as they said, we had, we had just as many letters and emails uh, about the service that we gave, but this would not have happened without the NSEA, make no mistake about it. We educated, we educated thousands and thousands of kids in multiple languages across the state, because of you guys, and uh, we're just we're just lucky and honored to be your partners. Thank you very much. We have the teachers that did teacher TV come up after the luncheon.
click above right up here and get a picture with Andy. Um, if you've taught in teacher TV, let us um, know and come over. Or coordinators, we have tons of coordinators as well. As he said, you can't do anything like this by yourself, right? You, you have to reach out. We had members who said, okay, I'll coordinate secondary, I'll coordinate middle school, I'll coordinate elementary. Um, we have tons and tons of folks who, who stepped in, some who did numerous, um, excuse me, videos. Um, and again, we used our resources to pay those teachers um, to do that. But we also know that everyone did that out of the goodness of their heart because we had a need. We had a need, we didn't know we had a need, and then we did it. But then when we started talking about the teachers that we've had on television, Mr. Rogers, Captain Kangaroo, hey, okay. Captain Kangaroo was awesome. Miss Linda, what? on Robber Room. Um, we How many had, don't know who, that, who those people are? I don't are. really I care if they know who they are <laughs> or not. However, they were, they were people. Um, you all know who Bob Ross is, right? Yeah. Teacher on television, teaching how to do something, and people were were wanting to know that. We, we needed to look at that. We have we have terrible broadband across the city, but everybody could watch that free, free. They didn't have to have cable. They didn't have to have those things. And so, um, again, when we talk about the things that are going on across the state, we need to remember that our purpose and our goal should be to always, always look at what's best for children and how we can help children no matter where they are. Um, ben Nelson once at a conference I was at, Senator Ben Nelson said that children are 25% of our population in the United States, but they are 100% of our future. And I appreciate the partnerships. And with that, we have the Friend of Education Award, our highest award, and talk about a partnership that we had during the pandemic. Um, our Friend of Education had unwavering um, support and stood no matter what through this time of uncertainty. The University of Nebraska's Medical Center Global Center for Health Security, nobody knew it was called that, it was like UNMC. They are our partner. They are the ones that nationally everybody went to. They are incredible. Um, unless somebody didn't agree with them and then, you know, they were. But that <laughs> <laughs> Because everyone always agrees with us, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh -huh. The center has played an instrumental role in researching the coronavirus and in getting information and resources in the hands of public health officials and schools. Nebraska students and teachers greatly benefited from this research this past year, resulting in relatively few outbreaks of COVID in schools, but keeping our educators and our students teaching and learning safely. For this, we graciously thank UNMC Global Center for Health Security, with, and we honor them with our 2021 NSEA Friend of Education Award. We would like to specifically recognize um, back when we were doing Facebook Lives and we were calling them and saying, can you come on here with us because we just don't understand this. And would you please bring it down to a level we understand um, when you're talking infectious diseases. Woo! Can get right over there. But Dr. Um, Chancellor, Dr. Jeff Bull, Executive Director of Education, um, Dr. John Lowe, Executive Director of International Programs and Innovation, Dr. James Lawler, were all part of our partnership that we worked with. Um, and they were also who we blamed when we didn't we really know the answer. And we said, but UNMC says we should do this. Um, and, and today I was talking to them about, you know, what does it look like for the fall, right? Um, and we, we need to look at that now, friends. We need to look at what are we doing for the fall. And again, safety and learning. And so we appreciate the partnership. And today we have with us John, um, and I practice this, oh, Craddeville. No, did I do right? Craddeville. Dr. Chris Craddeville and Dr. John Lowe, our partners and our friends, and give them a standing ovation.
SCA, both, uh, you know, we're really blown away at just how remarkable all of the staff and teachers, members of NSCA, and the leadership are, and you've really borne that out this last year. Um, I think one of the things that we've really been confronted with this last year is that, you know, we've had the opportunity to fight or flight, right, to just kind of give up, throw our hands up, go home and give up because it's complicated, it's hard. Um, I think one of the things that I'm just really impressed by, by this, you know, all of these awards and the recognition is that our educators across the state and NSEA definitely took, took to the fight and fought the good fight. Um, I can't tell you how many members reached out to us, asked us to come to school board meetings, to interact with superintendents, um, your leaders that asked us to join early morning or late at night calls to navigate really complex issues. Easy way out would have been to say we don't know, right? This isn't our job, this isn't what we do. And so we were always incredibly grateful for the opportunity uh, to serve you all and support you all by trying to translate uh, the science as best we could. We, over the past year, at least in the state of Nebraska, were very involved in a few things that we found incredibly meaningful. Uh, meat packing plants, so we sent teams into meat packing plants in the middle of major outbreaks. Uh, we went into nursing home, the long term care centers, and the threshold for the centers we went to was pretty high. Uh, went into the worst of the worst outbreaks. And the last and absolutely not least was our partnership with NSEA. We, we really felt like every interaction we had with both the organization and the members had a direct impact on the community, exponential direct impact. Um, so for our organization, thank you for the opportunity to disseminate science. Um, we know that public health, and I teach public health, we know that public health is inherently political. I open every class every year with that. And I think that what we've learned this year is that pandemics are political and maybe even education is political. So, uh, again, thank you for what you all well do. Um, we really appreciate the partnership. Well, I can't be this close to a hot mic without taking a minute to thank you all. Uh, so, my mom taught in a one room schoolhouse in Nebraska in the 50s. And when I look back at the stories of what she went through, I was always so impressed. But that really pales in many ways to what you all have done in the last year. So on behalf of University of Nebraska Medical Center, Nebraska Medicine Global Center for Health Security, thank you for what you do every day for our kids in the state.
And so our member organizers, I'm going to have them come up, Julie Colby, Marcia Edquist, Shannon um, Hing, Jake Joab, Nora Lenz, Lori Flusser, I don't think she's here, Leslie Gross, D. Tonak, um, and that's all we have with us today. Come on up. We have certificates for these folks who have been working as member organizers. Maddie's going to give out their certificates, and they're going to smile for you, and you are going to say thank, thank you, you thank for you. all your work. Thank you. 